Hey, and welcome to this course where you will be working with Python's dict dunder attributes. So you'll be learning about dunder attributes. So you will actually be lifting Python's hood and just snooping around a little bit in the logic that underlies classes and other objects. And if you're anything like me, you will probably recognize yourself in the picture here, investigating how things work with your little magnifying glass. So I'm very excited you're coming on this journey with me. My name is Stephen Loyens, and I will be your tutor for this course. So in this course, you will learn, well, what the dict dunder attribute actually is, how you can inspect this attribute and how you can modify it. So I can't wait to get going. So let's just get to it. To understand what the dict dunder attribute is, you need to remember that everything in Python is an object. And objects can have attributes and methods or data and behaviors. And the dict dunder attribute is one of those attributes, but it's a special one. So it's an attribute of Python objects, for example, classes, but not just of classes, as you will see in a minute. Now this dict dunder attribute represents a namespace. Now what does a namespace do? A namespace maps the attribute names to the values of the attributes, and it maps the method names to the method objects. So maybe unsurprisingly, given the name of the dict dunder attribute, it's a dictionary. And the keys of that dictionary are the names of attributes and methods. And the values are the values of the attributes and the method objects. Now, the cool thing is these Dunder attributes are recognized and used internally by the interpreter to process classes and objects. But that doesn't stop me, and it shouldn't stop you, from lifting the hood and snooping around just a little bit, just looking not touching, not yet, anyway. So where can you find this dict dunder attribute? Well, you can find it in user-defined classes and their instances, and you will see some examples later in the course. But not just classes, you can also see it in modules, in user-defined functions and methods, and in the written tutorial on which this video course is based, there's a really cool example of how you can add an attribute to a function. Yes, you've heard that right. Functions can have attributes and you can create those using the dict dunder attribute. You can also find this dict dunder attribute in built-in exceptions and their instances, in classes created with the built-in type function and in built-in data types. But not all objects have the dict dunder attribute. Whereas built-in data types have them, instances of built-in data types do not. Neither do built-in functions nor objects with a dunder slot attribute. Now, the how and why of that is beyond the scope of this course, but I invite you to do your own research here. So now you know what the dict dunder attribute is, and what it's used for, you are ready to create a demo class in the next lesson and to inspect its dict dunder attribute. In this lesson, you are going to create a demo class and inspect its dict dunder attribute. So to do that, please go to your favorite IDE. I am using VS Code for this recording. So create a new file called demo.py class demo class you're going to create a class attribute and all this is going to do is say this is a class attribute also create the init method and in there create one instance attribute called instance attribute so self dot instance attribute and it will say that this is an instance attribute then create an instance method so a def instance method it's an instance method so that takes self as an input parameter and you'll return 
just a string that says this is an instance method. Finally, I'd like you to create a class method. So def class method, and that takes CLS as an input parameter. And all we'll do is return a string again that says this is a class method. Now to make this a class method, you need to use the decorator at class method. So that is your demo class. In the next lesson, you'll test your code in the REPL. Please save this file and then go to your REPL, open it in the same directory where you saved the demo.py file and then test our code. So from demo, import demo class. And also I'm going to import pretty print. That just makes it look a bit more readable. So from pprint, import pprint. So now use pprint to print demo class dot underscore underscore dict. Now, before you hit enter, have a think about what it is you expect to see. Remember the dict dunder attribute gives you a namespace in the form of a dictionary. So I'm expecting to see all the attributes and methods of my class. So I'm expecting to see in the form of a dictionary, a class attribute, an init method, an instance attribute, an instance method, and also a class method. So that's what we're expecting. Now, please go ahead and hit enter. And what do we get? Firstly, we get a mapping proxy. A mapping proxy just gives you a read only view of a dictionary. So the dictionary is clearly within the curly braces as always. And what you get is a number of things I was expecting to see. And there's also something that I was expecting to see that actually isn't there, but we'll come back to that in a second. So what are the keys and values of this dictionary? There are a number of dunder attributes there. There's a dunder dict. That's interesting. We are looking at the demo class dunder dict attributes, and that has a key dunder dict. What is that? Well, let's park that for a second. We'll come back to that in a minute. There is the dunder doc key, uh, the value which showed a class's doc string if there was one, but this class doesn't have one. There is dunder init. Ah, we were expecting that. So indeed, the dunder init method, that is the init method of the demo class, and that finds itself at this particular memory address. There is dunder module. Now, dunder module, that is a key. The value of that is demo. And that holds the name of the module in which your class lives. Now, remember your first line was from a demo. You imported demo class. So demo here is the name of the module in which your class lives. Done the weak ref is not relevant for our purposes. It has to do with garbage collection. I'll leave it to you to do your own research there. But then we have class attribute. That I was expecting. And that is uh, the key of the dictionary here. And the value is uh, this is a class attribute. So the key of the dictionary is the name of the attribute. And the value of the dictionary is the value of the attribute. We also recognize class method. So the key in the dictionary is the name of the method. So class method. And the value in the dictionary is the actual method object. Now here it is described what that is. It is a class method and it is the demo class dot class method at a particular memory address. We also see then at the bottom the instance method and you were expecting that of course and that is the dot instance method method of the demo class at a particular memory address. Now what I'm not seeing is my instance attribute. And I don't quite understand what this dunder dict attribute of the dunder dict attribute is. What that is, you will cover in the next lesson.